journey from Uganda to here has been quicker than my journey from the terminal to entering Nigeria. <laughs> I see the lady is nodding. I think she has an experience of what we've gone through. Huh? If, I, if I start talking about my journey from the terminal to entering Nigeria, it, it has been longer than my flight. <laughs> But that's another story for another day. Anyway, I'm so excited to see everybody here. I'm just not sure which people are attending with us here and which people are in their own business. Because once we know that, we can be sure that um, we have full audience. And I'm sure they are capturing some audio. So if we're having background noise, I don't think it will be good for production. Um, if we can, if we can um, minimize the background noise and put the concentration here, it will do us good. Are there people outside there that are doing any other business? So if you are doing any other business and you think you can't be, you can't be uh, talking lowly, you can move out and conduct the business from there. Thank you so much. Once again, good. My watch is still in GMT plus three. It's in the wrong time zone. <laughs> I almost said good. <laughs> My, my, my watch is counting three hours ahead. Um, I'm not sure whether whatever I'm going to present is already reflecting somewhere. And number two, this laptop is not mine and it is locked. That's how disorganized I am. <laughs> From my flight, I came direct. Good thing I found lunch already. And um, after eating lunch, I'm now on the stage. I've not had sleep for more than 24 hours, but that's OK. Um, we shall manage this. Devs work at night. So I'm more productive when I'm tired than when I'm very, yeah, Ruth. Come on, your machine. <laughs> and I thank you. OK. Um, how many minutes do I have? Because I had, I have 20 minutes to make an effective presentation. Jesus, God of heaven. Okay. So, um, I, I, I have my laptop there, but it, it has refused to connect to the Wi-Fi network, and we were out of time. That's why I borrowed another one. Hopefully it doesn't disappoint me and embarrass me, but disaster preparedness, I've informed you in advance. If you see it misbehaving, it's not mine. <laughs> it's borrowed. <laughs> All right, now that I have 20 minutes, um, I need to know what I'm going to say and what I'm not going to say. And I need to make sure that whatever you hear is going to be meaningful for this presentation. I'm, my name is Enoch, Enoch Kasada. I am coming from Uganda. That is in the East African part um, with um, Kenya, Tanzania, South Sudan, Rwanda, Burundi, and then um, Congo on the east. Sorry, if you've never been there, that's where I come from. And I am a member of Chaos. And in Chaos, I majorly contribute to it by managing projects which the budging bot is one of them. The other projects we manage, we are working with GitHub, partnering on a project that is also um, having a lot of chaos work within there. And I am one of the people that is developing that project. It's mostly about creating um, DEI metrics that are going to be put on public repositories. So the way you see contributing.md, code of conduct.md. Um, we are going to be having another file that may come in future that is called dei.md. So in one time in future, when you meet a repository with that, with that markdown file, you just know it was a product of uh, the chaos community. <laughs> but today, our main topic is going to be about the budging board. Um, people call me a scarce commodity. I didn't know I was one because I think they look for me and they do not get me. But I've not also slept in my house for the last two months yet I was paying rent. So even the, land, even the landlord calls me a scarce commodity. <laughs> Otherwise, um, 
in the budging board, I'm sure there are very many people that are interested to contributing to this board. And uh, I hope by the end of this talk, you can be sh you can know where to start from in, in order to contribute to this board. One, a board can be a short form for a robot, the physical robot, or it can be just a program that does um, pre-programmed, that executes pre-programmed instructions on behalf of whoever made it. And for the sake of the budging board, it's for the second definition. It's just a set of instructions we gave to a certain project to make sure that, um, am I holding this right? Okay. To make sure that it executes some instructions we gave it to do. And we're going to know what those instructions are. Um, in chaos, we have what we call the DEI working group. I'm not sure. I came in late, but you guys have heard what a working group means? Yeah, yeah uh, it's like just uh, a common group of people that are working together on a particular topic in chaos uh, to develop metrics. And I'm sure you know what metrics means. All right, so in DEI, we have um, a process that is um, that awards badges to to conferences like this one. Though Ruth, I didn't see the application for this conference. I'm not sure whether it's all right. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it's fulfilling all the requirements it ha it has to fulfill. So, when you submit in your project to Chaos, Chaos will use this badging bot to help it in the process of reviewing such a conference to make sure that it follows um, the DEI metrics that Chaos developed, which I think now are being adopted at least on, um, I should say on international standard because we've had a lot of um, conferences that have been budged and they're coming from different continents. Um, what happens is if, I, if, if, we, if we organized the Chaos Con Africa, conference, um, Chaos Africa will submit for a badge, and the use of this badge is just to um, to add, what should I call it? If someone wants to come for this conference, they need to be sure that they are safe. They need to be sure that they'll be welcomed, and they need to be sure that their race, their ethnicity, their professional background will not be um, despised and, um, and, 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 and this process makes sure that that thing happens and how do we do that I'm, I'm now away from the theory but so for those that um, that wanted to know the background of that I'm away from that I want to now speak to the people who want to contribute to the project are we that thing looks like it won't. Uh, okay. Oh, it's still loading. I want to speak when it starts. Lo okay. Yeah. That's right. Um, I've had I've had my Chaos Con Africa members who have texted me in um, the different channels and also in my DM about how to start contributing to the budging board. And uh, mostly there have been new contributors who are looking for where to gain skills from. And the projects we introduced them to are Agar. Agar was the project that you saw here that was being presented, but the audio wasn't coming out right. It's uh, being managed majorly by a gentleman called Sean. Then, too, we have the badging board. We have the badging website, and we also have the project badging, which right now is not public because um, we're still setting up the initial work for it. But majorly, on the badging board, this project is developed in JavaScript and mostly Node.js. Um, for Aga, it is in Python and JavaScript, for those who use Vue.js. And what we do in a badging bot, we use the OctoKit library. OctoKit library is a, a GitHub API uh, library, which condenses all the hard work 
that you would have done in the VS code into very simple into a very simple line. So if you want to make an API to the GitHub, if you want to make a request to the GitHub API, you do not need to write very long lines of code. You just need to use the, the OctoKit library. Once you install it, it gives you very short methods that you can use to have your project running. And just to demonstrate that, uh, I can show you, okay. I need to get this down. I'm going to only show you one file. The rest of the files will be up to you to explore depending on what your interests are, since I also don't have time. So um, I'm going to only show you the main sections of this project because the other things are like a domino effect. Once you know wh where the gist is, you can explore the other things by yourself. Um, if you look at the file, if you look at the files in this project, there are really not so many, and if there are many, they are mostly in the source folder. That's where we have a lot of logic. Um, this project, this badge assigns a checklist. It cali it calculates uh, results. It checks moderators. It has um, it has the ability to issue an end command for reviews. It has the ability to get results for the reviews. Um, there is a function that has not yet been implemented, which is help.js here, where you can ask for help if you are either a reviewer or you are an applicant. And then the index file for the source, where all these other files are called from. And then this project also updates our readme file, which is found at, uh, we, have, we have a repository where we keep all the budget events. It's called uh, diversity and inclusion. It's also in our organization. And then also, this project has a functionality of welcoming the reviewer and the applicant. But I won't touch those because they're like secondary files. The file I want to concentrate on for you is this. I thought I would also speak about deployment because I mostly suffer managing deployment and if I had one person who would help me manage our servers it would be very good on my end. I wouldn't become a scarce commodity. I think because I have a lot of things I manage technically in Chaos Africa I become so scarce because there are a lot of things you have to give your time to. So um, if you look, if you look, oh sorry this was a, oh no that is so small. How many minutes am I left with? Ten? Five. To make an effective presentation. Five minutes to make an effective presentation. I am wordy, that's my problem. All right. So, um, did I touch somewhere? Did I check anything? Okay, um, add me more time because of the battery. As, as they're bringing the battery, the first time I heard about JavaScript, I was at a, a Google Developers Conference and the gentleman who was speaking was writing HTML in JavaScript. What do we call that? HTML in JavaScript. What's it that? What, what's that called? Uh, and I spent two hours looking at things I don't understand. I moved out and I didn't understand anything until after almost there when I met JavaScript. That is when I was in my our moments. I call them our moments because I call them our moments because there are things that you will hear in technology and never understand them until you meet them. That's when you start saying, oh, hi, ooh. So that's why I call them our moments. I, 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 I looked at code, I didn't understand it until after a year. 
that's when it started making sense. Why I say that is if you look at anything here and it doesn't make sense to you, just pay attention. That's in case you're interested because you may use it in future. And if you meet it, you may also be like, ah, ooh, something like that. So um, I want you to look at the first line here. Uh, the first line here was the line I wanted to show you. That line uses a library that we that is called OctoKit. The library I was telling you about, and how we use OctoKit. Uh, how I want to close this terminal. Now. Okay, not close it, but okay. Let me just close it. And how we use and how we use that OctoKit library is uh, we use it to. We use it to call this object. Now, since 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 the G since the budging bot is an app, we are more interested in initiating a new GitHub app that is going to help us uh, that is going to help us act on behalf of the user. That's why it's called a bot. It acts on behalf of the user. So. If you've seen like Docker apps, if you've seen, uh, there is one prominent one that that uh, checks dependencies in GitHub. I'm forgetting its name. Something like Octo. I'm forgetting its name. All those are called GitHub apps. And and here, we initiate our app by using only these. I don't know. They look like eight lines. They look like eight lines. Only those. And when we call, okay, that was good because I was competing with whatever that was. Okay, we use OctoKit to initiate a new app that acts on behalf of the user. And how do you know that it's acting on behalf of the user? Because we get all this information. It's the user that provides all this information. And on this and on this and on this part, uh, it's me that actually created this app and and gave it all these um, IDs, where you can find those, and why it's important that you should. OK, I don't know whether Ruth is, uh, is an admin of the organization. I just want to show you those. But if they are not there, OK. Um, if you want to create a GitHub app on your own, you can come to community settings. Yeah, um, or if it's a personal app, okay. Let, let's say this is Ruthie's account. You can come to settings down here, and when you come to settings, you can scroll down. You go to developer settings, and then go to GitHub apps. It's already there, and then create new app. When you create the new app, okay, this needs authentication, which Ruth has, but I'm sure a password can be auto filled. Oh, I need to. Okay, let's leave that process. But you've seen where you can access the GitHub app from. And once you access that, it will give you, it's really, it's really a very simple process that you will follow. And once you have all those in place, you can be able to access um, the app ID. You can generate a private key, a client ID, a client secret, and also a webhook secret, all from the process of creating a GitHub app here. And why I'm telling you this is if you're contributing to the budging bot, you may need to create your own app because you're not going to be committing directly to the main branch. You need to be creating your own app, which you're going to use to test whatever you want to test. So when you come and create your own app, it will give you your personal, your personal credentials here so that you can use them to create your personal app. The rest of the things, you can leave them the way they are. How I test my changes is I also forked a repository that I use to test some of the changes. If I want to test whether my app is updating our table of budged repositories, I create I create a duplicate or a forked repository and test that from there. Um, so once you've got your credentials and this and, and actually if you want to know okay I want I want to show you some other place. Plus, tell me how many minutes I'm left with. I thought someone is snapping to inform me. I want to show you. I want to show you. I want to show you where you can access 
the documentation for OctoKit and see how beautiful it looks like. Okay. Ooh, where is this? Um, okay, I was looking for the link of GitHub pages. But I can't find it. When I get it off head, I'm going to tell it to you. So I was saying, I, wa I wanted to show you the documentation of how you can use the OctoKit library. But once I get the link off head, I'm going to send it to you. So once we create our app here, which we have uh, initiated using all these credentials that I've told you where to get them. Once you come here and create a new app, it must be on your personal account. You must be able to get all these credentials. Uh, we can start using our bot in this way. Here I called it bot because I wanted to give it meaning. By the way, it's so hard to get variable names when you're programming. That's the hardest thing I've met in life. It's even harder than debugging. Getting a getting a getting a reasonable variable name is harder than debugging. <laughs> but um, once once this bot has been initiated, where we use it is somewhere here. I want to highlight that, that line. I want to highlight that line for you. Somewhere there. And you can see it here. I, I'm going to tell you how it's being used. Um, for those of you, if you're, if you're using Node.js, which I'm not going to go into, you must at least know what these two lines mean. We initiate, we ni we initiate, um, we initiate, uh, we use the Express library to help us to create uh, API routes. You can read that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to manage Express. All right. Uh, when you when you when you use Express, it helps you. It gives you methods and functions you can create to 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 create routes. And one of those routes you can see is this route. This is a route. This is the home route. App dot post. Um, I won't I won't go here because that's useless. App dot get. And this is a route. When you go to wherever this bot is posted. Right now it's running on uh, budging dot. No, it's running on. Um, ooh, I'm forgetting the URL. But when you when when you go to the URL and say slash logs, it will give you the logs of the budging bot. We log these so that we know whether the bot is still working or not, and we do this from the server. But you can also access these logs from anywhere you want. I want to concentrate on only one route and I end this and that is app.post. Once you've created your app here, once you've created your new bot, which is app bot, something like that, two of them. GitHub uses what we call webhooks to send information to your app. For example, when you create a new issue, when you sign in, when you create a pull request, when code is merged, there are what we call webhooks. And when that activity happens, as long as you created a GitHub app and linked it to the URL of where this app is posted, it will always send post requests to that app. When you're, when you're opening your, when you're creating a new app, you will see that. It will ask you for the callback URL. And also for the post, ur for the post URL. So you link it, if it's on localhost, your local host machine is not accessible to the internet, so GitHub won't know that it is there. We use a tool called smi.io. I won't, I, won't, I won't search it there, but if you want, if you ever want, if you're working on a website or if you're working on a backend app and you want your friend to test it out, you can always use that tool called smi.io. It helps your local machine be accessible on the web by anyone else from anywhere. So. When you do that, you can be able to create a public URL that can be able to link that when there is a webhook that is triggered, GitHub sends it to that, 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 that link that was created by SME.io, and SME.io will link it to your localhost project. So once that request comes, once that webhook comes in, it will be consumed by these lines here. And what these lines do is, they get the payload 
and that payload has um, the information of the webhook. If you've opened a pull request, um, the payload will have information about which organization it is, which repository it is, who has created the pull request, who has, when was it created. Now, we use that kind of information to manipulate it in very many ways so that we automate our bot. For example, if, if Chaos Con Africa applied for a badge, that badge is triggered to create, you can come, that badge is triggered to create an issue on our repository. Creating an issue triggers a webhook. And if you connected your app so well by giving it a, a URL, that webhook will be sent to your app. And that webhook will be received by this post route. And what happens is um, this, 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 this route will receive all the payload concerning what that webhook has brought in. And we shall know that it's a pull request. And how we know that it's a pull request, when you go to this code inside here, it will show you, it will show you how we know that it, it is actually a review for a conference. And then we shall get all the information and use the OctoKit library to manipulate the API to get whatever information we want so that we can now start programming the bot here to give it all these functions that you can see. All these things can be, easily, can be easily understood by you if you either have an idea or if you're really willing to put in the effort to understand. Otherwise, um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say I'll be so much available to assist, but I try my level best to attend to people when I can. Because um, when you are working with open source, it's, it's, it's volunteership. And you also have your personal work to do. So it's not like I am seated on the computer and I was hired to wait for DMs. But I try my best because... I try my best because it is also what shaped my career. So I need to give back to people. So for those that want to contribute, you can always um, text me. And if it's in the channel, you just tag me at K A X A D A and I can do my best to reply anytime I can. I don't do it deliberately, but it's out of other obligations that I do that. Otherwise, I think I think let's stop here for now in uh in a matter of saving time. I'll be around depending on what the other programs are and we can chat later about even very many other things. One thing I didn't tell you is um, I also work with Debian. I work on, um, on a, a programming tool that is uh, in a continuous integration and continuous development. This tool helps to check whether Debian packages are fit to go to the, to go to the release stage. So if you use Ubuntu, Ubuntu actually li lies it, uh, Ubuntu was built on Debian. Yeah? So, we can also chat about that if you are interested in it. Otherwise, thank you so much for putting me on pressure because I'm not a good timekeeper. <laughs> I, I, I've been so much on pressure that I even feel my, my, my presentation was a little boring, but it was necessary. <laughs> Otherwise, we can chat later. Thank you, guys. Let me also see how, how I enjoy my stay in Nigeria. So please hold on. Um, please let's give um, Enoch a very good round of applause. Um, something I've noticed is that if someone loves what they do, you can always tell from how they talk about it. And we see how passionate Enoch is about this badging board. And I can tell you, he really is. So please clap for Enoch again. We really appreciate all you do. So we'll be taking some questions now, so you'd answer like two questions. So who has questions for Enoch? I haven't seen you raising your hand, so. Thank you, I've been looking for Enoch Colora like everybody else. <laughs> so expect me at the back. <laughs> okay, so I have two questions. I, as a developer, I want to come into Kios to contribute to the badging board. Uh, I think I would like to know where I can come in. What I mean is, what are the issues on ground? 
Um, you m m made a statement that um, was important to me. You said you need someone to help you manage the server. So what are the issues that you would like developers to contribute to? That's number one. Number two, this training you just gave us now, is it possible that we have a recording of it? Like, um, what I mean, no, I'm not talking about your training now. I'm talking about um, you entering into our YouTube on, on Kios. We have something like that that somebody just coming in can just go there, watch and rewatch until they have an idea of what the badging bot is all about. And then can go on without having to text you or DM you on Slack. Very valid question and very good suggestion in the end. Um, the issues that are around in the badging bot, right now we are integrating the badging bot into the badging website. So um, we may need dedicated back-end developers who can help us to actually do that. We're thinking of using either Python or Ruby on Rails or Node.js, but depending on uh, the expertise we can get, we can, have, we can have someone or a group of people that can help us do that. The badging, bot, the badging website is up and running, but it's only the front end. It doesn't have the back end. We want to change the process of the application. So that's one of the areas. The other area is... Uh, we have some other functionalities that, that we think could smoothen the process of applying for the badge. And those functionalities, we think they're going to come in while we are integrating the badging bot into the badging website. And once we have maybe a team of people, we can continue the discussion to give them an idea of what we think we want to add in into that process. And about the servers is... Uh, we, I, I manage, I think, around four servers of Chaos. I've forgotten their names, though. <laughs> I only find them in my Google account, but the badging bot is one of them. And sometimes I, 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 you find that you have to make some changes. When people make re pull requests and you merge them, sometimes you find one pull request is distorting the deployment, and you have to go into the server to change some... Uh, to change some environmental variables, to also monitor the logs, to know where maybe the error is coming from, things like those. So that's also on part of the server. Our server runs on Linux, uh, Ubuntu. So for those who are interested in that. Then the third one, the last one, um, we wanted to create a shell script that helps um, beginners to contribute to the badging bot. That shell script was, was um, actually partly started by someone here. Who, whom I'm not, where is Faith? Yeah, 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 Faith there. She, she has been working on some issues connected to writing that shell script that will help a new beginner. You just get that line, put it in your terminal. It gives you all the things you may need. And once, you, once it finishes running, your work is just to click NPM run, start, and things will start on their own. Um, she was, she, she is working on that process, but if we can have more people who can work on that script, it will be useful to help the developers also there. So I think those are areas. And then for the YouTube, wh where is um, Mary Blessing? Yeah, we are okay. No, no. She, w she was asking for a more broad, a more broad um, recording of this particular uh, training eh, by me so that we can upload it somewhere and people can access it to start. So um, we can do that. I don't know when, but I'm going to commit to doing that because it's just a matter of putting OBS Studio and click record. Thank you so much, Enoch.